Hello, Gary O'Toole here, and I thought today I'd show you a little bit about some simple ideas of uh, how to play grooves. The way we're going to start is by taking an eighth note groove, as we call it, and uh, really trying to spice it up. So what I'm doing is I'm playing with a metronome. <clears throat> metronome set to 80 beats per minute, which is one and two and three and four and Now, in order to actually understand how you spice this up, how you make it interesting, really you've got to understand the space between the notes, and you've got to understand how much time we're playing with. When I play with a metronome, I've got that click going in my ears. And the point about that is that's the guide. And I tend to think of it as, like, if you're playing in a band and you're playing with a percussion player, then he might be playing uh, clave, which has got that kind of sound. It's very similar to the sound I've chosen for the click to be in my ears. Sometimes it's like a cowbell. And what you should do is actually think about that as being the key to understanding how to play along with a metronome because if we just think of it as a click it's boring so we want to make it a little bit more interesting so you've got that percussion going on in the background we're going to call it percussion rather than a click because it makes it much more obvious what we're describing so once we do that one and two we want to play in time with that. So that's why when we play with a metronome, we learn how to do that. Now, the key to this is understanding the space. So we try and put a grid down. If I'm playing this particular groove is an eighth note groove, and we would count this if I just get it with the metro one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, so that's what we're counting as we play three and four and one. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Now the point there is that I'm playing with the metronome. I'm keeping it in time. And that really is the thing that when we hear a band playing we relate to just how smooth it is we don't think uh, about the fact that the instrumentalists have had to think about playing with a with a metronome you just think you're hearing music when you start to think about playing with a band the thing that often comes up is a discussion about time and time is something that's not terribly well understood. But understanding time is what this is all about. Whether you're playing a simple groove, or the most complex groove, or you're playing the most simple, or most complex fill. Really, understanding where that pulse is, coming from a metronome, or coming from the percussion. When we play, what we're trying to do is give the guidelines for the rest of the band. Now, the first thing that's really important, as I was saying, we want to spice up this groove. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to put notes in between the notes that we played. And so far, we've played one and two and three and four and. So if we want to play and we want to spice it up, we're probably going to note, use the notes in between those which would be 16th notes. And 
and what we do to make sure that we know where we are is we count those. So it's 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 E and a, 4 E and a, 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 E and a, 4 E and a. Now if you've never done this before, you should take it back to maybe 50 beats per minute. So 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 E and a, 4 E and a. And get used to that 1 E and da, 2 E and da. Get used to that counting. So what I'm going to do now is actually put the notes in between. So let's put the metronome on. 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a. So what I did there was to actually take an eighth note groove, one and two and three and four and that, and then I put first of all the bass drum on extra spots in between the hi hat. So if I'm counting that, 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a 1 E and a 2 E and a 3. So I've got those 16s coming in with the bass drum. Then I started to do the same sort of thing, but this time with the snare drum. And really this is what we start to term as syncopation. So when you start to place notes in between what the hi-hat is doing, either with the snare drum or with the bass drum, you then start to find that there are other patterns that are coming out. Now what is important throughout all of this is that you actually know that you've still got the pulse that I refer to as the pulse point, which is uh, the snare drum on two and four. So although there are other notes being played, actually we're playing them at a quieter level. It's really one of those things that if you want to find out more about, uh, you can come across to uh, garysonlinedrumschool.com and I'll be absolutely delighted to show you through my membership site where all of this is actually explained in greater detail. When you play through these ideas, this is really where it starts to get very interesting. If you're a beginner, then you really need to get familiar with the idea of having this grid system of counting because it gives you an insight into exactly where the notes can go. They don't always have to go on all those positions because that's usually where, certainly it happened for me, uh, I was accused of being too busy. You really need to be mindful of the music that you're playing along with. That's it for now. I hope that you've got something from how to, uh, how to actually play these grooves and make them a little more interesting. And if you find this interesting, please give me a like just below this video. And if you want to find out more, please come across to uh, garysonlinedrumschool.com where I'll explain all of this and more in greater detail.